La ilaha illallah inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen La sharika lahu wa bidhalika umirtu wa inna awalul muslimin Ashadu an la ilaha illallah ashadu an muhammad abduhu wa rasuluhu I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is khetaman nabiyyina Seal of the Prophets My prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lord of the worlds I welcome you all, as every week, I welcome you to Juma. Thank you for taking your time out. I know it was uh, difficult in the middle of the day, so alhamdulillah, you did that. I was at a seminar this morning about domestic violence. In the seminar, the guest speaker made a comparison of the number of soldiers lost in the war on terrorism and the number of females lost uh, to domestic violence. It was interesting. There's six, oh, about 6,000 soldiers that have been lost in an 11, 12 year period. But interestingly enough, profoundly enough, 11,000 women have been killed last year to domestic violence. So as always, I'm always thinking about something that I can give the people in the chutzpah to help you to further your understanding or to help you on your journey. So my chutzpah today is, as the Prophet Muhammad said, marriage is one half of faith. Marriage is one half of faith. The nikah in Islam is one of the most important acts of ibadah, or worship. But isn't it amazing that we take more time choosing a college than choosing our mates? Isn't it amazing that we take more time looking at features on cars than we take choosing our mates. But in, this, in Islam, marriage is a little different from other cultures. Marriage in Islam is a business contract. I know that's going to put some of you off, but in Islam, if you read the Quran, it is a business contract. Islam says... It's a covenant between the bride and a groom that contractually before the wedding, the woman and the man can request what they want out of a mate. That's a contract. That's a business decision. This suggests that there has to be communication as juxtaposed to infatuation. I'm going to say that again. This supposes, uh, 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 really, it means that you have to get into the other person's mind to understand who they are and what they want out of life as juxtaposed to just saying that they are good looking, they have a nice body, so on and so forth. Islam makes it contractual that both parties have to sit down and spell out what they want in their marriage. This suggests that you have to take an intuitive look into his or her mind as opposed to their physical aspects. I'm saying this because marriages today are in trouble. We have a 76% divorce rate. These are the people that's on the books. We're not talking about the people who actually are divorced, living separate lives, who have not filed. Islam says that it is a mythkun ghalithun. It is a solemn contract between two people. What does that mean? Islam's marriage is not a, is not a, a, a covenant. It's not a sacrament. When we talk about sacramental things, we talk about things that are handed down from God. Marriages in Islam are not made in heaven. Allah gives us guidelines to choose free will to choose our mates. He says, is the man who thinks and the man who doesn't, are they alike? He says, by no means. The man that does not think is like an animal or even less. 
That means that marriages in Islam, if the contracts, the oaths are not fulfilled, we are allowed as Muslims to get a divorce. The Prophet Muhammad says marriage is one half of faith. In Islam, this religion is about reason. This is why the Quran says, like a half deen. There's no compulsion in religion. Let him who believe, believe. Let him who disbelieve, disbelieve. It is the same thing congruent or synonymous with your marriage. You know, contrary to what you hear in the press, the men and women have rights in marriage. Contrary from what you hear from some of your hardcore imams who are trying to make a political point, women and men have rights with their potential mates. If a woman feels strongly about education and her mate, potential mate, doesn't want her to be educated, that should be a demarcation or a line in the sand to not marry that type of man. If the woman feels strongly that she wants to work outside the house and the man that she's marrying doesn't want her to do that, that should be a demarcation or a line in the sand to say maybe this is not the person that I want to be married to. Consequently, on the other side, if the man finds a woman who he has or he wants to be a housewife as opposed to being a person who is out there in this dunya or this world, he has to make a choice to say maybe or maybe not for this woman to be in my life. So prior to that, to this thing that we call marriage, we should look at our potential mates like we look at everything else in our lives. We look at everything in our lives in detail, most of us, before we make decisions. Why not your mate? Allah says in the Quran, among his signs, we have created companions for you, mates from among yourselves, so that you may find tranquility in them, love and mercy. Then he says, surely these are signs for people who think. What is Allah saying here? How can you find tranquility in somebody you're not compatible with? How can you find tranquility with somebody that you haven't even exhausted an attempt to know who they are? You just saw their physical attributes and said, that's the woman or that's the man I want to marry. Allah says, surely these are signs for people who think. It's amazing to me that we get married to people and we have no idea who they are. It's amazing to me that we wonder sometimes how children turn out to be certain ways, yet we didn't vet the husband or the wife that we are marrying. Allah says he has created for you mates to bring tranquility to you. And he has created love for you. What does tranquility mean? Tranquility means peace, security. It means that a person that you are involved with gives you the most happiness as opposed to other things in your life. It's amazing to me that people say, I have married my soulmate. What is that? Where does that come from? Your soulmate is a person that you find compatibility with. Your soulmate is a person that has similar interests with you. What do we do most of the time? We marry.